video. I'm just going to uh, continue on the last video, the can custom apps overview, and show you how to create your own custom app. Just walk you through it real quick. Launch D7 2. And go to Config, Custom Apps. Click the New App Clear All Settings button. And get ready for this custom app. Oops. Yes, Windows Repair All-in-One from Tweaking.com. I've been asked to make this app a number of times. Never bothered to do it. I know people have done it themselves. It's very simple to do, but some people don't know how to do it, so we're going to show you. First off, we need to know where to get the app and how to download it. I'm going to use the portable version here, the direct download. Copy shortcut. That's for my, well, all right, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Don't want to run this on a server OS. I don't, you may, it's up to you. Don't want that to happen in auto mode, for example. Um, you can give the app a description in case you need one. Um, website or online help file. Um, that is tweaking.com. Manual download page. Just copy that. Manual download page. Um, you can open that by right clicking on the custom app in D7's main interface. Um, also, it will open um, optionally. This is optional, but it, it will open if um, the app fails to download. Excuse me, the app fails to download for some reason. So it'll open the download page for you and take you right there. So we'll move to the download settings. I do want to always read download if app is greater than five days old because there may be a newer version. Um, not doing using my FTP. Um, doesn't use non-direct URLs. Don't need to spoof. Oops. That's not the download link. Let's get the download link. Copy shortcut, paste it in here. You have to give it a file name. I know it's a zip file, so name it .zip. Hit your test download button, always. It will download, extract. Hopefully it'll be a success. The reason why you hit the test button now is because when you move to the execution settings, you can just browse for the app instead of having to type in the path because the app's already there. Move to pre-execution settings. I'll give this an audible alert in auto mode prior to running app. This is going to uh, let me know when the app is um, ready to run. Now I have the 3264-bit app path executable name. Just hit browse. Find your executable. There we are. Notice it has uh, everything after third-party tools in the path, but not up into and including. The reason is, is you don't know where D7 is going to be on any given system, but D7 does know where it is. So don't put that in there. Just put everything past third-party tools. No proceeding backslash. Or just browse for it and let D7 do that for you. Um, command line parameters. I know that Windows Repair All-in-One accepts at least one parameter, and that's called slash silent, and that will run it automatically. Not really silently, but automatically. And, of course, we want to wait for the app to terminate in auto mode. That's all we need on this page. Then we have post-execution actions. Um just want to copy a log file and give it some verbiage for the work report. This is named activity log. You'll note right here I've actually changed the name to work report for D7.2 and I just haven't updated these labels yet. So I'm going to give it some verbiage like repair windows with app. Percent app percent will expand to the name of the application, whatever you give it. So it'll say repaired windows with 
Windows Repair All-in-One. That's what it will say in the work report. And then we're going to copy log file to. I want it in the reports directory. I want to move it. And I don't know where the logs are going to be. I have no idea. So I'm going to save and test the app. And it's running. Um, it's running automatic. I'm going to stop it. Close it. Yes, it ran correctly. Just going to open the directory here. And you'll see it created a logs directory. And then this is the file that we want. So I'm just going to copy the name of that file. We'll go back to the post execution actions. Now, just like um, the execution settings, D7 knows where the app is, but it doesn't know where the log is going to be. It may or may not be in the application directory. It may be in program data, application data. Um, you know, it could be anywhere. It could be C colon backslash, like patch my PC, C colon backslash computer name dot RTF. So you, you, uh, you need a little bit of flexibility here. So to tell D7 that you're going to look in the application's path, since you don't know where that's going to be, you use this variable, app path, percent app path percent slash, that puts you in the application path. So that puts you wherever that executable is going to be. That executable is going to be here. So this puts you here so far. So we want to open logs. So we'll put it in logs. And then we want this file name. You can hit the copy now button and you watch that log file disappear from up here. We'll save the app. Where the copy log file goes, um, goes here. Um, you'll notice I've done this before. <laughs> You'll notice in my work report, I've done this video once before. No biggie. Um, let me go to the... Ah, oh, I forgot to add it to a section. After I made my app, I have to assign that app to a section. So I'm going to choose repair. Drag and drop that over there. And we're done. And now I have this app in repair. Okay, all we need to do to run the app, you can right click and run, or you can double click. I'm right clicking because I want to show you that you can run the app normally as configured. And we'll just do that real quick. And you see it's running automatically because we use that silent command line parameter. I just went ahead and stopped it early there. But if, for example, you did not want this to run automatically, at least and you know until you've configured it or something like that um, you can right click on it and run app dash ignore command line parameters that will ignore the slash silent parameter we put in there so when you run it now it just opens the app as as it would if you were to double click on it in Windows Explorer um, run app post processing only this does all of the post processing on the app meaning, I'll configure app to show you, all of these post-execution actions are done. The app is not actually run, but it will export the reg key if configured, copy the log files if configured, and put the activity log verbiage in there. So that's something you want to use for a special case. The app crashed or something weird. Um, we have some other options here. Um, nice little convenience to have. But uh, say I want to run the app and make some modifications. Say I run the app ignoring the command line parameters. I made some modifications and now the app has a config file settings.ini. Just going to rename that. Oh well, actually. Let's get right to the nitty gritty. If I have made some uh, changes to their settings.ini, say I don't want to reboot or I do want to shut down, what is that about? I don't want to shut down. False. 
I'm going to save that. But how does that settings.ini get in this directory if you freshly downloaded this app? If D7 freshly downloads it. Well, I'm going to copy that settings.ini. This is the, the quick and dirty way to do it. Go to your pre-execution actions. Import config before execution. That was called settings.ini. And we'll save it after execution too, just in case you make some modifications to it. Actually, we don't need to do that with this app, but anyway. Now, where does the file actually go? It goes in third-party configs um, in your d7 slash config slash third-party configs directory. Just paste that app in there. That's all you need. Now, that app will get copied from this directory to the application directory before it runs every single time, even if it's freshly downloaded. We'll just save that. And I think that's uh, about done it for us. Now that I've created this custom app for you, I'm just going to add this to D7's original apps lineup so you don't have to do it. And um, just look for it in the next default apps update if you don't have it already. Um, look for it in the dcloud portal if you don't have that already. Hope this video has been of some use to you. If you have any questions, let me know. www.foolishit.com www.foolishtech.com for the forums. Thanks for watching.